Hello, my name is Mike Garcia. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and at uh, Hand and Upper Extremity Surgeon at Florida Orthopedic Institute. Uh, today, I'm going to demonstrate the rotational correction plate and the mini comprehensive fixation system. I've begun by performing a dorsal approach to the third metacarpal, and I have pinned into place using the BB tax the rotational correction plate. In this situation, I am centering my osteotomy more towards the distal metaphysis, and in doing so, I have placed the Y, connect, y portion of the plate distal over the distal metaphysis. You will see in the center of the plate, there is a oblong uh, hole that is oriented in a perpendicular fashion, and this is what we will use to gain our rotational correction. Once I've pinned the plate in place, I have confirmed via fluoroscopy that the plate is in the appropriate position. Next, I will drill the three holes proximal to the oblong hole. Once the holes are drilled, the size-specific depth gauge is then used to measure the, depth, the length of the screws. Once the appropriate uh, length screw is measured, it is placed under the screwdriver. Uh, it is held securely to the screwdriver by this uh, screw holding sleeve, which is one of the defining features of the set. It provides a very secure fit between the screw and the screwdriver, and it does not allow the screw to fall off as it's uh, being instrumented into the bone. Now the BB tack is removed, and that hole is subsequently drilled, measured, and filled with the appropriate length screw. At this point in time, it is not necessary to take these screws all the way down to their maximum bite, as we are going to remove the plate prior to making the osteotomy. The next screw to be placed prior to the placement of the osteotomy is a screw in the distal fragment, the fragment that will be on the distal side of the osteotomy. And this screw is placed into the oblong hole. A decision must be made by the surgeon as to what direction the rotation needs to be corrected, whether it be in a radial direction or an ulnar direction to correct the rotation. Should the surgeon wish to correct rotation into the ulnar direction, the ulnar side of the hole should be used. Should the surgeon choose to correct the rotation into a radial direction, the radial segment of the hole shall be choosed. For the maximum amount of rotational correction, the screw should be placed at the edges of the oblong hole. I have chosen to rotate this patient in a radial ward direction, and therefore will drill into the radial side of the hole. The screw is placed, but does not require a very tight bite at this point, as we are going to remove the plate. You can think of this as essentially tapping the screw hole. Once this is completed, this screw is then removed, along with the three screws on the proximal side of the plate. Prior to removing the final screw, a marking pin should be used to mark the site of the osteotomy so that it is placed in the appropriate position. The location for the osteotomy in this plate lies between the oblong hole and the three holes on the straight portion of the plate. Slight angular correction can be made through this osteotomy by making it non-parallel to the joint line. The final BB tack is removed and allows us to remove the plate from the bone. As you can see, the location of the osteotomy lies between the oblong hole and the distal most portion of the straight plate. For sake of expediency, we're using an oscillating saw to complete the osteotomy. In a real patient, uh, you may choose to do a low energy osteotomy via bicortical K-wires and osteotomes. Once the osteotomy is complete, the, screws, uh, the screw holes are used to realign the plate onto the bone. Again, it is recommended that these not taken fully down into the uh, second cortex for complete seating until uh, multiple screws have been placed. This allows for minuscule correction of your plate placement when reapplying the, to the bone. Once the plate is reapplied proximally, the distal screw hole is lined up with the radial side of the oblong hole. And this screw is placed to secure the distal portion of the osteotomy. The screws proximal now are tightened in the bicortical manner. Once proximal fixation is obtained via the bicortical screws proximally in the straight portion of the plate, the off-center screw in the oblong hole is then placed back into its position in a near bicortical manner. 
you want to leave some gap in between this screw and the plate to allow for rotational correction. And you can see at this point, the surgeon is able to dial in the rotational correction by m rotating the finger in the distal segment in that oblong hole from maximal radial position to maximal ulnar position. Once the appropriate clinical rotation of the digit is obtained, the screw is then taken down and secured in a bicortical manner to the plate, maintaining that rotational correction. The bicortical screw here will maintain reduction of your osteotomy site and also maintain the improved rotation of the digit. Once this portion of the case is completed, the remainder holes can be filled with either cortical or locking screws to complete the fixation of the osteotomy. This is the complete fixation with all the screw holes filled and you can see the, the amount of rotation correction achieved through the oblong hole. Once this is completed, final radiographs will be obtained to confirm reduction of the osteotomy and appropriate placement of hardware. Things to look for on your post-procedure fluoro x-rays include reduction of the osteotomy and alignment of the hardware, particularly such that the screws in the proximal segment of the plate should be in line with the x-ray beam and the screws in the distal segment of the plate should be offset and angulated the amount that the osteotomy corrected the rotation. A small postoperative splint is applied to the patient, typically with proximal phalanx being blocked. This is removed uh, very early in recovery, postoperative days, in between postoperative days two and five, to allow for early range of motion uh, due to the security of this plate fixation. Early range of motion is key to prevent uh, stiffness and tendon adhesions uh, that the patient may be prone to after an open approach to the metacarpal. Weight bearing will be allowed at six weeks or when fracture union is evident on radiograph.